Okay, the draft horse. Uh, yeah. Okay, this is a very simple poem about the seemingly random act of violence, in which two people are innocently travelling through a grove in a horse-drawn buggy, when the horse is suddenly killed by an unknown man. Uh, the form, structure and language all add to the simplicity of the poem, and there is nothing odd or out of place in the poem. There aren't really even any metaphors or phrases that the reader would have any trouble sort of understanding. Um, so this is why you really need to sort of look into sort of deep interpretations, because there's a lot of different ways you can sort of see it. And it's a bit of a weird one. I don't particularly like it. Okay, basically, let's just talk about the structure quickly. The poem consists of five stanzas with simple A, B, C, B rhyme scheme. The first two stanzas form one sentence each, uh, with no punctuations in either of the stanzas until the full stop at the end. This gives these two stanzas a very sort of matter-of-fact tone, and make sure there are no pauses or chances for contemplation or consideration for what has been said. The third stanza consists of two sentences. Uh, this is because the first sentence stanza in the last of actually uh, is the last um, of actually telling the story of the event, uh, and the second sentence is the conclusion of the event. Um, with the night drew. Um, night is obviously what comes after the end of the day, and in this case it's used to signify the end of the events. The last two stanzas then simply describe that and why um, the couple then walk away. Um, okay, so first kind of interpretation is to see it as a metaphor for old age and encroaching death. So a metaphor for old age and encroaching death. In this case, the lantern that wouldn't burn quote, lantern that wouldn't burn, could either signify that the body has lost its radiance and energy, or could be the kind of waning of the sharpness and awareness of the mind. The frail buggy um, is the sort of frail and weak body, and the heavy horse shows the struggling and labouring heart. Maybe. Uh, the pitch-dark limitless growth could be death, and uh, the pitch-dark limitless um, symbolising the black eternity of nothingness of death. Um, in this case, um, the man could be death itself, you know, the figure of the sort of death, um, or more likely a servant of death, um, seeing, as it says, the man itself or someone he had to obey. It's a really, really weird poem. It's really quite creepy. Uh, this fits because death or the messenger of death... Um, by killing the horse is making the couple have to venture into the limitless grove or into death itself, you know, dying. Um, that would also explain why the couple accepted fate and were the sort of least disposed to ascribe any more than they had to hate, had to to hate. Um, and they go out into the limitless grove of death without question, not through fear or hate, but because of the inev inevitability of the situation. Um, and that is why they, um, they seem to treat such an abnormal situation with such acceptance and almost indifference. Uh, it is fate, you know, death, which is quite interesting. This interpretation does bring a lot of other questions about why the two people in the story share the same body and heart and why killing one heart kind of kills them both. But that's, that's you know, it's, it's a good interpretation. Another, this is, I'm just reading this from something that I found. But um, another way you could look at this poem is seeing it as a metaphor for the lives of ordinary citizens in totalitarian states, such as Nazi Germany, Soviet Russia, or West Germany. The link could be to people seeing or noticing strange and unnerving things that they know aren't right, but accepting them because the other option is to be brought down into them. You know, the state encourages um, people to denounce their neighbours and all that. Um, for doing anything that is seen as against the state or its policies. Uh, a lot of the time when someone has, um, was denounced, and most of the time they were found guilty, um, a lot of the time they hadn't uh, committed any crime. Uh, they would disappear, being sent you know, to a work camp or somewhere like that. Yeah, so the long, invidious draft could be almost a curtain covering up what has happened from the outside world. And then the man could be an agent of the government um, who does what he deems necessary and then disappears again. This is why the people would simply follow along and walk the rest of the way. And the quote is, walk the rest of the way.
Okay, so let's just get into the analysis of it. Stanza one. It's all about the people who are traveling. Okay, so what we've got here is um, lantern wouldn't burn. You know, lantern wouldn't burn and pitch dark. So we get this image of darkness, this lack of hope. You know, this, we get, you know, from darkness, we have connotations of hopelessness. Um, this idea of human evil and maybe sadness. It's almost like a horror story. And then we have this heavier horse. There's alliteration, alliteration, heavier horse. You know, it's this idea of something being tired or doomed, perhaps isolated, there's no escape. Um, and there's also, yeah, um, frail. We have this little negative connotations of something being frail. It has this sort of sense of foreboding, this weakness, old age, pessimism. Okay, now we have a limitless grove. Um, it's an or oxymoron. Uh, for being kind of, you know, showing this sort of sense of being trapped, you know, entrapment, um, kind of links to the gothic sort of thing, really, this this poem. It's a little bit gothic. I don't know. A limitless grove, a small wood. Okay, yeah, and now stanza two to three, basically when the horse gets killed. Um, so we have this whole idea of our horse, you know, it's there's a sense of it belonging to them. Or if you're going to take it to a wider thing, you could link it to ideas of, you know, control and maybe alluding to some kind of slavery or something like that. Um, you know, our horse is, uh, our is a possessive pronoun. Uh, and then there's this idea of deliberately stabbed him. It's very emotive, it's violent, aggressive, um, but it's also really detached. You know, it's very matter of fact. It's careless, it's random. But then you can also say in nature, in life, it's very unpredictable, spontaneous. There's no guilt. There's, it's just kind of, they just get on with it. And like we said with the previous um, interpretation, you know, perhaps in like totalitarian states, you know, it's this idea of that. Uh, no guilt, um, premeditated death, you know, it's, it's just disposable. Also, we have this idea of a beast, uh, it's sort of this faceless, no identity. Um, there's no emotions associated with it. And then uh, stanza four to five is the attitude of the people. It goes from first to third person. Uh, it goes from a personal story to this sort of detached thing. It's sort of very judge-like. Like, um, and there's this most quest unquestioning pair. The most, it's sup the superlative. And, you know, we get the sense of they've accepted fate. The quote is accepted fate. Uh, it's inevitable. They don't care. They're uncompassionate. They're just just you know it's just happened you know all this thing they just get on with it uh, and there's this side two two the repetition of two two um in that quote which is uh where is it uh i can't find it oh well if you're revising you can find it uh something uh, the repetition of two two uh this is kind of disorientation i think i get from that repetition it's a bit weird And then there's uh, the quote, wanted us to get down. Um, maybe this is a comment on humanity, you know, how something wanted them to go down in their power, have less control, you know, get down from the thing. And this really links to this idea of maybe death and also this kind of totalitarian thing, because that's quite an interesting point, and I like it, it's clever. Anyway... That is the draft horse.